Here now, America First Legal Senior Advisor and Fight for Schools Executive Director, Ian Pryor. Ian, good to see you. I mean, listen, uh, uh, talking politics, it's great to spend a lot of money. A lot of money can do a lot of things, but is it better just change your darn policy, start siding with parents, not with unions, and you start to win votes? Well, certainly. I mean, you know, this is this is the third election we've had in three years. I mean, this is Virginia. You have an election every year. And obviously in 2021, you really saw the power of the parents movement, you know, push Glenn Youngkin, Winston Sears, Jason Yaris to victory. Now, 2022 is a different story, right? Because that is federal. It's not we're not talking about these local policies. But 2023, we are back to talking about those local issues. And, you know, having a governor that like Glenn Youngkin and having the House of Delegates, it really stopped the bleeding from the previous administrations. But the fact is, Democrats still hold the Senate in Virginia. So you're really not able to start unwinding all the things that have been done over the years by these previous administrations until that Senate flips Republican. So, you know, it's it's going to be razor thin, this, this margin of victory. I mean, we're talking about two seats in the Senate, three seats in the Senate that are going to decide the future of this state. Meantime, President Biden might be a little closer with the teachers' unions than we even thought. The new book about Biden alleges that Joe Biden delayed reopening schools to appease friend and ally, none other than American Federation of Teachers President Randy Weingarten and, of course, friend of Terry McAuliffe, one of the reasons, many of which, that McAuliffe lost. FOIA writes for... Quote, for the sake of avoiding conflict, especially conflict with an ally, the Biden administration trimmed its goal of returning kids to school to a fraction of what had been promised on the campaign trail. Maybe Biden was worried that she'd have a reaction like this. All of a sudden, when it's about our students, they challenge it, the corporations challenge it, the student loan lenders challenge it. That is not right. That is not fair. But there, but Ian, they're still sidling up with the woman. Secretary Miguel Cardona ending his back to school bus tour with a guest appearance by this woman. So much for not being in bed with the teachers' unions. Yeah, I mean, I can't imagine having her, you know, over for dinner and, and a nice conversation. I mean, it sounds like it would. It would, it would get into those ranch, shall we say. Um, but, you know, look, the fact of the matter is Randy Weingarten's been pulling the strings on education for quite some time now. And the fact that the Biden administration didn't have the courage to stand up to Randy Weingarten and stand up for children and parents that wanted to get back to school. And now you're seeing a little bit, you know, they're starting to push masks again. As, as COVID comes back a little, they're starting to push it again. And, you know, it's important. Senator Vance, I believe, has um, legislation uh, currently in the Senate to, to prevent mask mandates um, through cutting funding, which I think would be important. But, you know, as you look at what the Biden administration is now starting to do again, they're starting to talk about these, these restrictions, these mask mandates. It's not going to be long before Randy Weingart and starts leaning on the Biden administration to do everything she wants. And based on that book and based on common sense of what we can all observe, yeah, you know, it wouldn't be surprising if he, he does that. And based on the money that she gives to Joe Biden, they'll probably comply. Ian Pryor, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Good stuff. Thanks for having me.